So I've got beta hat 1. If we repeatedly sample data from the true line, this will follow a normal distribution centered at the true slope with a particular variance. What is that variance going to be? Turns out that variance is going to be sigma squared times 1 over the sum of squared differences in x. So before we talk about this quantity too much, I want you to just see what we have here, see what this says. This says that if we repeatedly sample from the population, sample y's from this line, and estimate slopes for each data set, the average, the mean of those slopes will be equal to the true slope that we chose by simulation. On average, our slope estimate is equal to the truth. And that set of slopes will follow a normal distribution that has some particular variance. And this is the expression for the variance. Okay. So this should exactly parallel what we have here, where the x bars follow a normal distribution with mean equal to the true mean and some particular variance. This is also true by the central limit theorem. This is true by the central limit theorem. And I want you to note the parallels and how these variances look. So what is this variance quantity? How much do we expect our slope estimate uh, to deviate from the true slope? Well, it depends on sigma squared. It depends on the residual variance. It depends on how far the values are on average from the line. Just like the variance of x bar depends on how much the values in the population deviate from the mean in that population. The bigger sigma squared, the bigger the residual variance, the more we'd expect our estimate of the slope to vary. And that makes sense because I'd expect my estimate of the slope to be better if the points are very close to the line than if the points are really very far from the line. I'm less likely to get a slope estimate that's close to the truth. What about this denominator? Well, first of all, note that this is the sum of the square distances from the mean for each value of x. The more data points I have, the bigger this quantity will be. Just like this value here, the more data points I have, the bigger this denominator will be. The more data I have, the bigger I expect this denominator to be. In other words, the smaller the entire variance will be. The more data points I have, the closer my estimate of the slope will be to the true slope. If I just have a couple data points, my slope estimate might be off. But if I have a lot of data points, I'm going to do a much better job estimating the slope. And you see that in this expression because this denominator will be bigger, and so this entire quantity for the variance will be smaller. What else? This quantity here reflects how spread out the x's are. So what this says is the more spread out the x's are, the bigger the denominator, the smaller the entire quantity. If I'm trying to estimate the slope, but I only have points for a couple values of x, it's going to be kind of hard to estimate that slope. But if I have data points for a big variety of values of x, really spread out x's, I'm going to get a better estimate of the slope. And that's what this quantity here reflects. The bigger the square distances of x from the mean of x, the bigger this denominator the smaller the entire variance. In other words, the less my estimates of the slope vary from the true slope. So that's the intuition for this quantity. Now what we can do is see that we can use this statement to parallel the corresponding statement that we made about x bar in the one sample t-test context. 